All right, so um, I threw out a poll, both on the YouTube channel and in the chat, to see if we should continue our previous city, or if we should start a new one now that we've learned more of the game mechanics. Um, and people have voted about 60-40 to start a new city. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, before I do that, though, I actually want to go and have a discussion. I spent a bunch of time last night uh, playing with all the different type of roads to see exactly how they connect and what kind of intersections they form. And I want to go and theorycraft a wee little bit about this. I'm going to load the Diamond Coast because it's a pretty flat starting area. I do have the Infinite Money and Everything Unlocked uh, mod enabled right now so that we can take a quick look at this because um, there's, some, uh, there's some ideas going on. You'll see, there's a few a few little tricks I think I've, I've figured out. It's not all the way there, but... Alright, first of all, and this is really interesting, and I don't know if I was fully aware of that, two lane roads never seem to create traffic lights. I don't think I was aware of that. Doesn't matter if you've got a one-way leaving, a one-way coming into it. Two-lane roads never create any traffic lights, which is really good, also sometimes really bad, because sometimes if there's a lot of traffic, um, they go and they sort of do this stupid sort of, they're trying to weave in and out, and it's not necessarily the fastest pace. But if there's no blockage at all, that's really fast. So if ever there's anything that sort of delays them for a tick that causes a blockage to start, it can take a little while to clear up. But other than that, these intersections are actually surprisingly fast. Now, if we compare that to the four-lane version over here. First of all, the four lanes do create intersections, lit intersections with themselves, even in a T-junction, and obviously in a four-way connection as well. Um, and again, that can be really good if there tends to be a lot, a lot, a lot of traffic, but otherwise it's actually pretty negative. Usually I'm finding you want to avoid um, controlled intersections like that. The other thing that's worth noting is that it, you get controlled intersections even when connecting up to a two-way. Now, that includes when you have a one-way coming in, but also includes when you have a one-way... Oh, it doesn't include when you have a one-way going out. Right, which is... Um, it sort of makes sense if you could only turn right onto it, but the traffic coming from the left side will have to cut across the lanes of traffic to get on there. But that's not so bad. So having a, a four-lane highway that feeds a two-lane one-way is not going to necessarily be too bad. Um, the three lanes work somewhat similarly, but I think they actually are slightly less likely to make um, a controlled intersection. This, obviously, you do. It's very big. I think the one-ways didn't. I might be wrong about that. One-way leaving does not. The one-way coming in does. Now, that is when you've got the six-lane two-way. I believe it works slightly differently when you've got a six-lane one-way. I might be wrong. Um, but you can see here, a one-way splitting into another one-way doesn't create any traffic lights. The one-way coming into it should, however, and it does, and certainly any actual intersections, say with a, a two-lane like this, for example, but a two-lane leaving doesn't, and a two-lane coming on does, I think it doesn't matter which side it comes in on, it'll create the traffic lights. Now, the final one we've got to consider is some of the highway stuff. Let me go ahead and extend this a little bit further like this so we've got some room to play with. The highways are really interesting because, first of all, highways can't make right corners. You can't make a 90-degree curve on a highway because the idea is it's a highway. You don't have any sort of stops. But what's also notable about highways is they will never, ever create traffic lights. Even... The, effectively, highways are always one-ways, but a one-way highway coming into another one will never, ever create traffic lights, which is really interesting to me. Um, of course, another one of the advantages of the highway is it does go faster. The cars can move up to a speed of 100 on there, as opposed to a, I think it's 60, 50, 40, for example. So they do move faster on here, but I think one of the things to really consider is the fact that... Um, there's never going to be the traffic lights. Now, the downside to highways is they don't create any zonable, zonable terrain next to them, right? But at the same time, a zoned area on a major artery can often be quite poor. Like, I've come to the realization that these two-lane roads, especially if they happen to be a one-way, but even on, on the, the bi-directional road like this, can actually carry traffic extremely quickly and efficiently. However, it starts to lose some of that efficiency when you do have the zoning here because what happens... Um, it's really bad with industrial because these things get shipments and deliveries all the time. And what happens is 
a car, a truck will pull over onto the side of the, uh, the zone right over here and block the lane. But that happens even in a residential area when it comes time to ambulances. Ambulances and hearses really fl uh, fluck up. We're going to say fluck up the, uh, the flow of traffic over here. The, the flow gets flucked um, because they too have to stop blocking the lane of traffic while all the vehicles get in. Really? You're building houses? Really? We're not even connected. All right. Sure. So, um, so one of the things to consider is, um, is where you do that, but he gets way more interesting once you start to piece together. And this is like the really cool part to me, how cars use lanes. So in city skyline, cars will try to get into the correct lane as quickly as possible. Let me go and, uh, just purchase a new area over here. So we've got some more room to work in. Um, actually this is nice and flat over here. Let's go ahead and do that, and maybe a little bit more over here. Again, this is not where we're going to be building our city. This is just a little testing environment with infinite money turned on so we can play with things. If we do something... Well, you know, it was really obvious with the highway, right? So we got a highway with an off-ramp over here. And let's say there's another off-ramp over here. It doesn't matter which off-ramp the cars are planning on using. They're going to try to get in the rightmost lane as quickly as possible, which can cause little bottlenecks. They're not going to sort of weave around people and then get in there. It becomes even more obvious if, say, you've got something like a one-way, six-lane road. Okay? And then you have, um, let's say at the very end over here, we have, I don't know, some, something like this. Actually, I shouldn't have done it with a uh, one-way. I should have... For best example, do something like that. Look at the turning signal. Look at the, the lane indicators. There's only one turning signal here, and so everyone's going to go to the right. Obviously, they have to. But not only that, they're going to get in the rightmost lane way over here. They're like every shitty driver in real life that doesn't properly use all the lanes. You're going to have one line of traffic down the right-hand lane, so it doesn't matter how big your road is. You don't get to take advantage of that. Um... Because cars try to get into their, their correct lane as quickly as possible. But you, I think, I think there's a way to take advantage of this behavior. And knowing how that works, we can actually optimize some of these connections. For example, check this out. If we have, at the end of one of these six-lane one-ways, if we have this kind of structure here, look at what happens to the signs. The two middle lanes will be dedicated to people going on the one way this way. The two right lanes will be dedicated to people going right. And the two left lanes will be dedicated to people going left. Now, if over here, all I have is stuff on the, um, uh, on the bottom here. Let me use the, I don't know, the Marquee tool. If all I have stuff is on the right, I believe that they will still mostly just get in the right lane right away because they're like, i got to turn right and then I want to be on the right and end up there. But if you have things on both sides of the road, then people who want to be ultimately on the left, I believe, will use this second lane right over here. And so the upshot of this is you end up with a perfectly distributed set of traffic on your six lane one way. Now, the question is, can we build a useful structure with this kind of thing? Like what you end up doing is subdividing the traffic and you can keep doing it even more if at the end of this, um, this two lane one way, we do stuff like this, or actually not even just at the end. You know, but everywhere along it, we do this. And we have a city that's evenly balanced on both sides. Not only will people use both lanes here, is they will just keep splitting in two and splitting in two, which is very, very nice. Also, knowing that um, these two-lane roads don't create any intersections, we don't have to keep using one-ways. At a certain point, we can just decide to switch to these two-way things. Like this. The downside is any cross traffic this way might f up some of your flow, might fluck up some of your flow going northwards. But at this point, hopefully, you've trimmed the traffic down enough that having some cross traffic this way isn't too bad. Now, this actually works really nice. And what you can do, um, you can end up doing like these sort of fractal, fractal designs at a certain point, right? So let's say we do this. And this is the example with the six lane. But we don't have to use the six lane. And in fact, um, it works also fine with just like coming right off the highway like this. Now that there's only the three lanes there, but the principle is roughly the same, right? Like this, like this, like this. And again, we don't get any sort of traffic lights whatsoever. There is a possibility of uh, using here because I use the, uh, the two way two lanes. Uh, there's a possibility of a little bit of cross traffic over here, but it's not the end of the world. You would, I'm a hundred percent sure. This is a very important thing. You would not want to build on this side of the road here or this side of the road here because the last thing you want 
is some ambulance or something to be stopped right here. That way, everyone who's trying to come off the highway can't because there's an, an ambulance blocking things. So you want to make sure there's a little bit of distance. But yeah, then we can go in some sort of like fractal splitting thing, right? So let's say we build this out to two, three, four units like this. Let me bulldoze that building. Thank you very much. And then we do something like one, two. And then from there, we go one and one. Go away, you. Bulldoze, bulldoze. And these little pop-ups drive me kind of crazy. I don't mind the chirper. It's little tutorial pop-ups that get in your way constantly. Right? Uh, if we keep doing this, you fill up 100% of the land in a perfectly fine way. Actually, I think we want to go another two from here. I don't know. Whatever. Like, you can keep sort of splitting over and over and over. The problem with this is there's not really an elegant way to loop the traffic back out of here at this point. You've got to figure out, all right, so the inflow is great and your density keeps dropping, but how do you actually pull the traffic back out of these zones back to the highway? And, you know, how do you deal with the cross traffic? What I've got is a little bit of a demo city. Um, what do I call it? Highway 1 to 3 entrance test. So this was me experimenting with exactly this sort of thing. Again, all the cheats are on. I just tried to build like, okay, let's try to whack in a whole lot of high density and get that going. But you can see the principles over here. But the highway that comes in and then it splits. And if we put on a fast forward, you can see this traffic moves really well up until the point where you have emergency vehicles here putting out a, tra uh, a, a fire. But assuming you don't have any of that, see this ambulance here might fuck up the traffic. There you go. See that ambulance there is stopped right there. So he's going to cause a backlog on this little street. Double ambulances. So you want to avoid that if you can. So all this backlog is entirely um, created simply by the fact that those ambulances are stopping things and sort of blocking things. And cars, you see these cars are not getting in the other lane because they don't like to change lanes. Maybe that propensity to change lanes will be tweaked as the game goes on to bypass these emergency vehicles. But other than that, that's pretty smooth. And then what happens is I have um, this bi-directional six-way or six-lane highway or road, I suppose, kind of doing a loop around here. So it sort of feeds out from there and then comes all the way back around and then the traffic can dump out there. Interestingly enough, there's no, again, because I'm using, um, I'm using a highway right here, it never creates an intersection here, which is cool. The um, on and off ramps do create intersections from time to time, but here because we're going on a highway, there isn't. And here because it's leaving. If we had an on-ramp coming in here, let me do a little test. We have an on-ramp coming into this six lane, it'll create a traffic signal, which and really, you know, slow things down a fair bit. But as long as it's leaving the six lane, we're okay. Even though these guys have to cross lanes of traffic. Now this isn't necessarily ideal because when they're making their left turn, sometimes they'll screw up the traffic, they'll fluck up the traffic coming the other way. Whereas the off-ramp came off here. Nah, the same thing happens because the traffic coming the other way would sometimes want to make a little UE, so. I guess it's going to be fine. But yeah, you can see the flow is really good up until the point you get an emergency vehicle. So, um, one of the things that becomes really tempting is to say something like, okay, let us go and dezone these areas. It's actually already partially dezoned because, um, let's just go bulldoze the building, because this is actually a school. A school sometimes needs ambulances as well. And what I can do with this school is maybe just shove it over a little further so at least we've got a little bit more room for that backlog to happen and then you can put trees and parks i mean parks sometimes have people because people visit parks so sometimes people get sick or die at a park but it seems to be a lot less frequent also there's an excess amount of uh, sickness that was happening over here because originally i had the um, industrial zones all the way up here all the way up here so the pollution was spilling over into my residential zones and that's the one thing with these dense layouts is um you need to have some space for parks and actually, one of the things I want to do in the Asset Manager is I want to create a park that's like four units wide, four units wide along the road, and about two units thick. So these sort of slim parks that'll be really good for lining roads with, something like that. Um, and yes, roundabouts are obviously a very, very functional thing, generally speaking. Um, roundabouts use up a lot of space. I was looking to see if we can potentially pull off a really space efficient thing. Of course, in the end, I'm leaving a bunch of extra space over here too. Um, but putting down parks also serves, especially in the middle. Since this is sort of the middle-ish of the city, it's a great place to put down a park. Um, that one's a huge one, but, you know, for the sake of argument, put that down because it'll cover this entire sort of zone that I've developed. So, 
the discussion with roundabouts um, is, first of all, I find, like, the big roundabout is, like, monstrously huge, but might still be a good idea. The problem is you can't really put anything in the middle, which helps traffic flow, I will admit. Um, I think my problem is that trees don't seem to add any beauty. They do, I believe, soak up pollution, which is good, but they don't actually, I don't think they raise land values, or at the very least, they don't add to the park accessibility. So that might be a thing. We could build a city based on a central roundabout like this, which might be a good idea. The problem with the roundabouts, though, is I don't think they work the way you think. Especially this big one, because I think everyone will stay on the outer lane. I don't think anyone goes on the inner lane at all. Uh, it helps if they're making a, left cor a, a right turn here from, say, this lane into here, then they'll stay there. Um, and then, but then they can't, they can't exit the roundabout from the innermost lane, so no one's ever going to use it. And I think it doesn't work as well as we thought. We could experiment. We can make, let's say, okay, for the city we're going to make. Oh, and the other problem is we can't start with the six lanes. Uh, it'd be nice to have a big central roundabout like this in our other city. We did experiment with a handful of these bad boys, and they work pretty well. Because, again, they don't necessarily utilize all the lanes. But you're not building this to use all the lanes. You're building this to have an intersection-free sort of loop that goes around. But even then, when we use this in our industrial area, we got a lot of... Well, we were coming from the highway here, and we were end up with a lot of backflow here and here. So it wasn't accelerating things to quite the same degree. I think this might be good for maybe, in, you know, inside your city, but I don't think it's good for feeding stuff off the uh, highway. Maybe this one is, and we can give it a try. But let's go ahead and actually make a city. We're going to go back to the main menu. We're going to turn off the mods that unlock everything. Now, here's the thing, and I hope they change this. Right now, um, so I also had... Unlimited money. You can see the uh, the names for things sort of gets a little screwed up right now. The preview build. Um, uh, um, Marina was quite clear that the whole asset Steam Workshop thing is um, is out of date in my copy here. So one thing I would like, when you go unlock all, if we do this and we start a new city. So I don't have unlimited money right now, but I do have unlock all put on. You'll see I'm going to start with a crap ton of money. And the reason for that is... Um, when uh, when you reach a milestone, you get uh, you get a money reward. So you can see here, I've got $715,000. I would very much like it, and I, I'm 100% confident that uh, this is something that can be modded, is I would like it so that there's a, um, so that the unlock all does not also give you the, um, the milestone rewards. On the other hand, the problem is this. When, when hospitals get unlocked, people start getting sick. When graveyards get unlocked, people start dying. When fire stations get unlocked, people start, uh, th things burn into, uh, burst into flames. Until those are unlocked, those things don't happen. So you actually do need enough money. Uh, if you unlock everything, you do need to start with extra money so you can plop those things down right away.